Hi, everyone. We're excited to talk about our submission to the Microsoft Power Platform AI Global Hackathon. My name is Isabel Gabok, whom, we'll whom will be presenting this solution with Daniel Kerridge, and together with our colleague JD, created this submission. For this hackathon, we had a number of ideas that we could do to leverage Microsoft's AI capability, but we all landed on focusing on the idea of improving the hiring process, mainly based on our experience and observations as a hirer and a candidate. So to put the problem into perspective, we've created a couple of personas to help us understand the user's journey and pain points. The first person we'll meet is Jose Boyd. He works for a recruitment company that's in charge of finding suitable candidates for his clients. His area of focus are frontline workers that requires large recruiting campaigns throughout the year. So think prior to the Christmas period where there's usually a recruiting campaign for various roles such as customer service officers and warehouse packers to help meet the Christmas demand. During these recruiting campaigns, Jose spends a lot of time reviewing resumes, preparing the interview, and then conducting the interview to assess the candidate's skills and experiences for his clients. For his clients. On the other hand is the job seeker. Meet Renee Rodriguez. She is on the job market, but as a full-time carer to a sick parent, she always seems to be she always seems to miss recruiters' phone calls trying to contact her for an interview, making her feel like she's one step behind everyone else. So this is where Seeker comes in to help streamline the process for both the likes of Jose and Renee. A power portal website that enables Jose to create job ads and allows candidates like Renee to view details about the job he's just posted. Renee can then upload her resume and conduct the job interview instantly at the time that suits her all while saving Jose time from having to think about the structure and questions for the interview and then conducting the interview itself. So time for the demo. Take it away, Daniel. Thanks, Isabel. So I'm here on our Seeker website and I'm logged in as a job candidate. So I'm going to click on View Jobs to see a list of available jobs that I can apply for. Um, so I'm interested in this uh, Power Platform developer position, so I'll click on that. On the left-hand side, I've got some information about the job and I'll scroll down and click Apply Now. So this will bring us to the first step where the, the user is able to upload their resume, uh, but I've already done that. So I'll, now I'll just click on start interview. This is going to bring us straight into a interview with an AI assistant um, that's been prepared by the uh, hiring manager. Hello. Welcome to your interview for the position of Power Platform Developer. Please tell me about yourself. Yeah, sure. My name's Daniel, and I've been in IT for 10 years. Welcome, Daniel. It's great to have someone with 10 years of IT experience. Let's dig into your skills and experiences as a Power Platform developer. Can you tell me more about your background with Power Platform development? And I'll just end the interview there. Uh, but you get the general idea. The, the bot will continue to ask questions and follow up on the questions that uh, on, on my responses. Um, so now I pass back to Isabel to show how the interview questions are generated. Sure. Um, so just before we um, go to talk about the flows, which converts the resume to text, I wanted to talk quickly about the interface. Um, so the interface that Daniel is using, uh, which was also essentially the candidates and the hirers, uh, they're interacting with the Power Portal, which was created using out-of-the-box templates and co-pilot to generate the specific pages on the site. When a candidate opens the, uploads their resume, sorry, it triggers a Power Automate flow to get their resume, convert that file into text. That text is then saved against their contact record, ready to be used in the next part of the workflow. When the candidate selects Start Interview on the portal, it creates an applicant record. That applicant record acts as a bridge between the contact and the job ad. On creating that applicant record, it triggers the next flow, which is in charge of getting the applicant's resume and job ad description, and then passes that information through the ChatGPT connector, which then outputs interview questions tailored for the job ad and the candidate. Those questions are then saved against the applicant record, ready to be sent to the AI assistant bot. Over to you, Daniel. Awesome. Thanks, Isabel. 
Um, so we just saw the uh, the first two parts of the uh, process, and so now I'm going to go through the the third part, which is what happens when the interviewer clicks um, the start interview button. So they're, they're on this page, and on this page there is some JavaScript. So I'll just quickly uh, bring that up to give you an idea of what it looks like. Um, so you see at the top here, we're importing a bunch of Azure Communication Services uh, SDKs. Uh, we're uh, creating a bunch of variables, and we're getting a bunch of information from the HTML. Um, and then we go ahead and set up a call client. So in ACS, there's two different types of clients. There's a chat client and a call client. The chat clients for instant messages and the call clients for used for like voice messages and uh, voice calls and video calls. Um, next, we need to get a token. So we needed some way to authenticate to ACS. Um, and we do that by a um, via a function app. So this is the HTTP function app here, which creates a VoIP token and a chat token. And then it returns that to the, um, to the JavaScript. Um, so next is we set up the, the chat client. So embedded on this page, there's a hidden chat client, and we start listening for real-time notifications. Um, so what actually happens um, on this page is when it loads, and we'll see this in a minute in the, the JavaScript, uh, the JS uh, does a call to the locally hosted uh, c-sharp.net bot. And then um, when that bot answers the phone, answers the call, it then sends some uh, chat messages back to the, um, to the Power page. Um, so you can see here that these are the messages that are being communicated between the, the page and the, and the bot. Um, the first message is system bot started the conversation. Uh, and then the, the page sends through the job title and the interview questions. Uh, and we saw how they were generated earlier um, in Isabel's flow. Um, and then how does, the, um, how does the page get that information? Uh, we just use the liquid uh, templating language. So we have a couple of hidden fields here um, called interview questions and uh, job title. And then um, so that's uh, Liquid grabs that data from Dataverse and then displays it on the page. And then the JavaScript grabs that HTML elements and then passes that through um, to the bot via a instant message. Um, so if we just finish off this um, JavaScript here, you'll see the remaining functionality where it's getting the job titles interview questions from the HTML and then it's sending that message through. Um, and we also do some other stuff to, to handle the webcam and the, and the microphone. And down here is where we're doing the start call. So this is the bot's um, telephone number. So that's um, so that's the JavaScript. And how does the bot receive the call? Uh, well, we're here on a communication services uh, service in Azure. And if I go down to events, there's an event set up for any incoming call. It routes it through to um, uh, routes it through to like a, a dev tunnel URL. Um, dev because the bot is locally hosted, it needs a way to connect to the internet, and it does that through a uh, dev tunnel. Um, so you'll see down here, the first half is the dev tunnel URL and the second half is the request. Um, and we'll see how that works in the C-sharp code in a minute. Um, and this is the event type incoming call. So that's, um, and now we'll have a look at the C-sharp code. Um, so again, I won't go through all of this because it's it's largely doing the same thing as what the JavaScript does. It sets up the call client, chat client, et cetera. Um, so I'll just point out some key features, um, like in ACS, you can have many different voices, um, and there's some multilingual options as well. Um, we're getting all our API keys from this app settings JSON file. And then uh, this is that request that we just saw in that URL just before. Um, this is the bot's phone number, so we're setting up an identity for the bot. And uh, as we go down, you'll see the chat. Uh, so this is the first chat message that gets sent. And uh, we're setting up cognitive services. Um, so cognitive services is the service that we use um, to do the speech to text and text to speech for the bot. So it's able to recognize uh, what we're saying. And um, that's set up, it's, it's just an Azure service. So if I go in here and click on speech, you'll see text to speech and speech to text. Oh, sorry, I'll just switch back to the screen. Um, so now we have, so the call is coming through and the first, uh, so if the call is success, um, the first message that JavaScript sends through is the job title. So we need that with, for the first prompt, which is, um, you know, hello, welcome to your interview for the job title. Please tell me about yourself. Um, from here, we go into a loop. So the bot plays that message back to the, to the user so they can hear it. And then we convert whatever the user said, wait for the user um, to say something. And we recognize that text, uh, convert it to text from speech to text. And then we send it to GPT to, uh, with a prompt. And then uh, we respond to the person in voice. Um, so just to quickly go through those functions, here it is playing it, the voice to the user. And then we wait for the recognize event. And then we convert whatever the person said back into text. And, um, and then we've got this ongoing event process. So whenever the recognize event is completed, 
Um, so the, the person just said, uh, t- they had just answered, tell me about yourself. So now uh, we pass this prompt to GPT. We say the interview just said this, respond to something nice and start with the first interview question. And then after they answer the first interview question, we have a different prompt, which is um, you're, an, you're in an ongoing interview with the candidate. Um, here's a summary of what's been said so far and um, respond to whatever they just said into the new input. Um, so that's how the C-sharp uh, bot works. Um, if you guys want to set this up yourself, um, you can do that by following these tutorials. Um, so just go to the ACS documentation. There's one for the Node.js app, which is the JavaScript, um, and it shows you how to do the Webpack process to export the Node modules into a single JS file so you can host it on the Power page. And for the call automation, the same thing is your call automation AI sample, the C Sharp uh, bot in the ACS documentation. And for the function app, you can go to day three um, from Tom Morgan's blog. Um, that's where I got the information to set that up. Um, so what you just saw was AI version one, I'm oh, sorry, not AI version one, Seeker version one. Um, which is what we submitted to the hackathon. Uh, in the background, we've been working on Seeker version two because we've got a hired manager who's interested in using this in the real world. Um, so we've added some functions to um, conclude the interview after a, if they don't answer a particular question. Uh, we've got multi-language support. So we had a use case for Spanish. Uh, we've got more human-like voice um, and we've got uh, a few other features you see on the screen. Um, we're also working on some other stuff like uh, so you can hand, uh, you can do start the call via a uh, telephone number. And you can view the recordings um, in the in the power portal. Um, longer term, we'd like to analyze the uh, person's webcam and their speech um, to see if we get any analytics out of that. Um, thank you so much for listening, and um, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.